Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right. Hey, everybody. It is Jay, Jay Crater. I'm recording this on Monday, March 16th. It's 9.45 in the morning. I'm going to take a little swig of my vanilla sweet cream cold brew. And I'm going to talk about what's on my mind, which is what's on everybody's mind, the coronavirus. And, uh, I wrote an article over the weekend called Seven Ways Drivers Can Survive the Coronavirus. And I'm going to break that down and share a few other little articles with you. But today's topic is this coronavirus. If you're tired about tired of talking about or hearing about the coronavirus, I am too. But you know what? What the hell can we do about it? It's here. It is impacting lives. If you think about it, I mean, they're closing restaurants. You know, what are those people going to do? Well, they, they may go out and start driving a car for Uber and Lyft, right? I think uh, I think this is actually going to be good for Uber and Lyft because all kinds of people are no longer able to work. And they're thinking, well, I got a car. I could go out and drive, right? That's kind of how I got started. I needed something to do. And I thought, well, I could always go out and drive. Uh, but we'll see because there are some risks associated with being an Uber and a Lyft driver, right? So, uh, quick tips. Uh, Stay up to date on the latest with the coronavirus, right? Uh, Don't drive if you can avoid it. Sue the rideshare companies if you're angry about it. Avoid the airports. Drive for delivery. Make sure to keep hand sanitizer in your car and take advantage of sick leave policies. So let's break this down. If you don't have to drive, then don't drive, right? Now, you know, I go on and on and on and on about plan B, having your plan B, and uh, hopefully you've been uh, putting together your plan B. And if you have, this is the time to fully engage in your plan B. You know, I, I'm, I was considering driving just, just so I could go and write an article about it and decided against it because it's a little bit like Russian roulette, right? Uh, who knows who's getting in your car? If I work... Uh, Let's say I worked Thursday through Sunday, I would see, I would have 84 people in my car. And, uh, you know, I don't know where they've been. Uh, it doesn't matter. You know, they, they just have to rent it to one person who has it. And, and then that gets, you know, put into my car. Boom. So if you don't have to drive, then don't. Pretty obvious advice, but it's something to really take seriously because, uh, you know, you don't want to get sick, one. And two, you don't want to get sick. And then for those couple of days where you don't really have the symptoms and you're spreading it to other people, and that just keeps the whole thing going. And that's what we as a country and a world are trying to eliminate. Um, If you have to drive, number two, if you have to drive and you're angry about it, sue the rideshare companies, right? So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely brings up a lot of anger for people because... They have to drive, you know, you're out there drivers, you have to drive to make money. Um, our, our, at the Rideshare Guy, uh, you know, we, we do a lot of research, about 70% of people drive because they have to, they have to make money. It's not a choice, you know, you got to go out and put food on the table. Um, if you're angry about it, take action. Uh, so if you, if you find this article, uh, and then point number two, there's a link to um, something called the Damage Calculator. And this company that I worked with called Potter Handy uh, will, will uh, estimate 
how much you're entitled to. And uh, according to this guy, Mark uh, Potter, he says, my average clients are entitled to well over $100,000 under California law. So take some action. It feels good. You know, vent a little bit. Um, doesn't cost you anything. And uh, it helps you kind of reframe your relationship with Uber and Lyft. Um, so, but not everyone can stop driving. So uh, I recommend avoiding airports. So um, I've always recommended avoiding airports in terms of picking people up. Uh, you know, if you take somebody to the airport, drop them off, get out of there and go go back to where you can start making money instead of waiting 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 60 minutes to get a ride, hoping you get a, a long ride. It's uh, the people who are coming uh, uh, out of the airport, you don't know where they've been. Have you seen these ridiculously packed, almost like cattle uh, calls uh, where our people are coming in and they, they all have to get tested, but they're all just, it's almost like they're all at a concert. They're so packed together. And uh, who knows what's, what's spreading from person to person to person, and then they get into your car. So uh, avoid the airport, just uh, leave and go back to uh, some place where you can start doing some pickups. All right, number four, load your car with Purell and wipes and use them. So apparently this, uh, this uh, when somebody coughs, it can travel like 12 feet, okay? This, uh, this virus can travel like 12 feet in the air. So uh, someone's in your back seat, they cough, uh, you know, it can definitely be hitting like the back of the seat. Um, where they put their hands, you know, uh, the doorknobs. So these are all things that you want to uh, wipe down uh, every so often as you're driving, and uh, and then have Purell. And I I would I would offer Purell to to your passengers and say, hey, you know, try this. Uh, would you like some Purell? And uh, let them clean their hands because then if their hands are clean, then they touch stuff. Uh, you you are improving your odds. It seems like this is all about improving your odds, right? Social distancing, keeping your hands clean, uh, things like that, uh, wiping down surfaces, all these things are just to improve your odds so that uh, you know, you're know you not somebody who's going to get it and then pass it on. And that's what we're all trying to do. We're all trying to be like our own little island and, uh, and then this thing won't spread. Uh, but you can buy you know latex gloves, paper towels, um, Kleenex, wipes, you know, uh, Purell, hand sanitizer, lots of things you can buy um, on Amazon or at your local grocery store. Now, some stuff has run out, but uh, they seem to be doing a pretty good job of restocking. Uh, there doesn't seem to be this crazy, crazy panic uh, in the streets yet. Um, although I do understand there's quite a run on toilet paper, I guess. People are worried that they're going to be in their house for a long time and they're going to run out of toilet paper. So... <laughs> Go <laughs> load up on toilet paper if that uh, floats your boat. Okay, number five, to wear a mask or not to wear a mask, that is the question. Well, according to the U.S. Surgeon General, he says, seriously, people, stop buying masks. They are not effective in preventing general public from catching coronavirus. But if healthcare providers can't get them to, to care for sick patients, it puts them and our communities at risk. So we don't have enough masks. So instead of buying a mask when you don't need a mask, uh, let the you know let the people who are actually dealing with sick people, the healthcare providers, um, have the mask. Uh, and it's just it's not very effective at prevention. Now, if you're sick and you're coughing uh, this stuff, then a mask makes tremendous sense because then you're not spewing it out, and uh, you're you're protecting other people who you come into contact with. Ultimately, it's a personal decision. Um, if I were driving, I would not wear a mask. I'm not wearing a mask when I go outside because it, it doesn't help with prevention very much. So number six, you can switch to delivery. Since, uh, since people are the problem, um, then you can just stop delivering people. There's a lot of restaurants and bars um, switching to takeout or delivery only. So apps like you know Postmates, Uber Eats, DoorDash, Caviar um, are all... Um, you know, do do it okay. People are ordering ordering in, so uh, and a lot of them have uh, nice little little uh, sign up bonuses too. You know, you do so many deliveries and you get a bonus, so that might make sense. Now, there's also uh, an article I found it says coronavirus Postmates, DoorDash, Uber Eats offer no contact delivery options. 
So this means that uh, you could be delivering uh, for those companies and you don't actually have to um, come, on, come into contact with people. You know, you just leave the stuff at the door and get away and then the uh, person can pick it up uh, off the door. Um, so it's interesting how everybody's adjusting to this, um, to this story. All right. So, uh, and then uh, the next thing you can do is take advantage of the company's uh, sick pay policy, number seven. So both, um, you know, Uber and Lyft and some of the delivery companies have announced uh, programs to provide sick pay for drivers who contract the coronavirus. Uh, Uber's uh, senior VP of Rides and Platform, a guy named Andrew McDonald, said, we are supporting drivers and delivery people who are diagnosed with COVID-19 or placed in quarantine by a public health authority. We believe this is the right thing to do. And apparently they're offering 14 days of paid sick leave. I'd, and I have not gotten any details yet. We haven't found anyone who's actually gotten paid how much they're considering a day's worth of work for Uber or Lyft. A Lyft spokesman, uh, 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 spokesperson, Alexandra Lamana said this, we will provide funds to drivers should they be diagnosed with COVID-19 or put under individual quarantine by a public health agency. So both saying the same thing, uh, but we haven't really seen any details. But if you do get sick, go go find out what you're entitled to and, and then let us know. Interesting. Did you know what COVID-19 means? Uh, it means corona, C-O, corona, virus, V-I, disease, D, covid -D. And the 19 is the year that it uh, was first discovered at the end of, of last year. So coronavirus disease 2019, shortened to COVID-19. My brother who works for Kaiser told me that yesterday. So what are the key takeaways for surviving uh, the coronavirus? Wait, I got one more article to share with you. Uh, coronavirus diaries, what your Lyft driver is thinking about right now. So this is from Slate. And uh, it was interesting that he, uh, he went out and he was talking to uh, passengers, kind of the idea that I had um, to go do some driving. Um, for example, he says, I picked up Jerry at a bar in Hillsboro, Oregon. Oregon. he just broken up with his girlfriend and had gone out for a few beers alone. He said the beer would protect him from the virus. <laughs> he asked to stop at Quickie Mart. He returned with a handful of Tootsie Pops and handed me several. Go ahead, he said, see how many licks it takes. Um, I picked up Jason, a pulling guard size guy in Forest Grove, Oregon, and drove him to work. He laughed when I asked about the virus. I ain't afraid of nothing, he said. I got Jesus watching my back. Uh, next writer, Bill, said he used to drive for Lyft, but now does something else. I asked him about the coronavirus, and he said, I used to worry about stuff like that, he said, but then a friend got me into microdosing psilocybin. Now I don't worry about stuff like that anymore. All right, so that's uh, an interesting take. Um, I asked Christy on her way to the grocery store whether she had thought twice before calling a car. No, she said, unless you're a medical professional, you're extremely unlikely to be exposed. And unless your respiratory system's compromised, it's not going to kill you. I put Christy down as a trooper. So that was kind of a interesting. Um, I'd like to hear I'd like to hear what more people uh, think and feel about driving in uh, an Uber and a Lyft car. Um, so I'm still really tempted to go out and do some driving, uh, just to uh, to write it, write a like a journal story about it for the rideshare guy. But we'll see how that uh, shakes out. All right. So key takeaways for surviving the coronavirus as a rideshare driver: There's no denying it's a difficult time. Uh, you may not want to drive, but you got to pay your bills, put food on the table, and keep the lights on. So you're going to go out and drive. So if you're going to go out and drive, protect yourself. Uh, stay away from uh, you know. Don't pick up anybody at the airports. Clean your car, clean your car, clean your car. And if you can switch it up to a delivery, uh, delivering food or groceries or weed, uh, do it, you know, if you really feel concerned. If you don't feel that too concerned, like uh, like I shared uh, that one driver, um, then drive, drive people, you know. If I were to drive, I'm not going to switch it up. I would drive people and, uh, and I would find that far more interesting than, uh, than delivering food. But if you're concerned... Go, go find caviar, go find uh, Uber Eats, you know, super easy to sign up and, and get started doing that. So you have options, um, take advantage of them and, uh, you know, be safe out there. All right. 
It's not the end of the world. The world's going to be just fine. We're going to get through this. And uh, I'll keep uh, sharing you with, with you every time I think there's something worth saying about this coronavirus, uh, which just continues to uh, storm through the world. And uh, they say like a couple of months, this could be a couple of months, this whole thing, uh, before we kind of get to a new normal um, on the other side of this. So we'll see. We'll see. But it's definitely spreading fast right now as I record this. All right. Hey, that's a that's a wrap. Fist bump to all you drivers out there. You guys rock it every day. I honor you, especially if you're out there driving now with this uh, this thing in the air. Thank you for sharing your journey with me. If you got a story to say, uh, by all means, uh, contact me. You can go to nomadj.com, click on contact, and uh, just uh, tell me what kind of story you'd like to tell on the podcast, and uh, and then we'll talk and, and see if it makes sense, and I can bring you on the podcast. Uh, some of the best podcasts have come from exactly that, people, drivers out there contacting me. If you're driving out there now and uh, you got some stories about this coronavirus, uh, hit me up. Um, or you can just email me directly at j j a y at nomadj.com. Nomad, N-O-M-A-D-J-A-Y.com. J at nomadj.com. All right. And this is Jay Creator, Nomad Jay, saying this episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.